Hello and welcome to the Extended Greg YouTube channel. I'm Greg and on today's show we're going to be looking at signal flow diagrams and how to create them. A signal flow diagram is pretty much a visual depiction of one signal that gets from the source to the destination. And it may be difficult to kind of visualize it beforehand if you're not in the equipment, if you're not actually connecting the wires, but it's very helpful in terms of conveying an overall concept. So that way other people can help with connecting that equipment and actually uh, setting everything up for a show or a production or whatever else. So let's get into what it takes to actually create a signal flow diagram. So a signal flow diagram is a visual way to show relationship between equipment. It's easier to determine requirements like equipment and cables, and it helps identify equipment compatibility issues. It can also save time during setup. Part of the key thing with a signal flow diagram is that you're able to actually go through and determine what inputs and outputs you have on particular pieces of equipment, and then see if the inputs and outputs of the equipment that it's connecting to is going to be compatible or if additional settings are going to be needed. You have a lot of opportunity to be able to look through manuals, for example, and things like that during a time when you're not under a time crunch. Usually the time when you're setting things up is going to be limited when you're on site for production or whatever else, but you have the time to be able to do it when you're sitting actually creating the signal flow diagram itself. So it, it comes in handy to be able to do that thinking ahead of time opposed to doing it on site. So how do you get started? First, you would ask yourself, what are you doing? Like, what's the overall objective of the actual build? Like, why do you need this? You know, and it's not like an existential question. It's more of just a practical question. What do you need to do? You know, what are they expecting? You know, are you going to do video recording of, for example, a concert or a play? You know, what do you need to end with when you're finished with a production, you know, do you need it to be a recording? Are you going to live stream it? You know, so it's really important to determine what you're doing. And that way, you know, kind of what your design objective is. And that helps the puzzle pieces kind of fit into place. And then the next thing is what equipment do you need to achieve that objective? I find it best to start with the endpoints, right? So what's coming in, you know, how are you getting your signal? And in this case, you know, like, let's say it's a camera, you know, and a microphone and things like that. So those would be the start, you know, the sources of your signal. And then where is it going? Well, let's say it's going to a recorder. So that would be your endpoint. And at that point, it would become a file and you'd be able to use it later. So you'd be able to walk away with something after all of your hard work. Definitely start with the endpoints and the middle parts we'll you know we'll worry about that later when we're creating the lines and relationships between the equipment it'll actually become self-evident so sometimes people try and look at the overall picture you know try and visualize everything all at the same time and it just gets really complicated to try and fathom exactly what each piece of equipment is doing um, when you think about it all at once it's it's best to kind of dive in and look at the smaller portions of the bigger picture and focus on that and work your way through it, but then have an overall concept of what the relationship is of that equipment in the bigger picture overall. This is really creating that bigger picture, you know? <laughs> that will help us uh, be able to determine exactly, you know, if there's a problem where it goes wrong. So we definitely wanna work from the source to the destination, and we're gonna make the connections from to get the signal from one end to the other, all right? And that's what we're gonna take a look at right now. So let's start with our example, okay? So let's say our intention is to record a play. To do that, we're gonna need cameras, we're gonna need microphones, right? And we're gonna need a recorder. So there may be some other equipment in the middle, but let's go through it step by step and kind of define what we need as we see the need for it. And this will also help us with minimizing the amount of equipment that we're bringing. We don't want to bring the whole world. It's just going to take forever to set up. You know, we may have a lot of equipment, but that doesn't mean we have to use it all. We want to apply it strategically and tactically to be able to give us the most efficient setup while also accomplishing our core objective, which in this case is to record the play. So let's start with a simple example, okay? 
So we'll say we have a single camera, a single microphone, and a single recorder. And let's just kind of define what that is. Okay? So here we have our camera, here we have our microphone, and here we have our recorder. So the simple relationship between this equipment, okay? The camera is going to output the video and input it into the recorder, okay? And the microphone is going to output its audio and it's also going to go into the recorder. And of course, you know, we could do this by having, you know, a camera that can do all of this in one shot, but for the purposes of this, we're just trying to dip our toe into what the signal flow diagram is. So it may not be as practical or efficient as it could be, but I think for the purposes of showing <laughs> these relationships, it's perfectly fine. So let's label what the actual connections are, right? So we have our video out, our microphone, microphone out, our recorder, video in, and audio in. Generally, when you're building a signal flow diagram like this, you do actually want to match the labels as it's printed on the equipment. It just makes it easier to be able to correlate it when you get into the physical world, uh, you know, when you're thinking about it in the theoretical world. You're already thinking about what connections are there, you know, what connections you're going to be plugging into. So when you actually see it, uh, you can just jump right into it. You know, it's not something where you have to you have to translate it on the fly. So what is the actual connection between the camera and the recorder, right? So in this case, uh, there's a number of options. If it's a consumer camera, or if it's something that's, uh, you know, not designed to be integrated, <laughs> you know, so let's say it's a handy cam, let's say it's a point and shoot, you know, a lot of them will have HDMI outputs. And a lot of recorders that you can get will also have HDI, HDMI video inputs. So let's say we want this to be HDMI. Right, And if we were unsure if the device supports it, we can actually look up the device that we have, look up the manual, and be able to make that determination of what video formats it supports. So what we would do is we would look at the camera model, we would look at the manual, see what the output formats are, look at the recorder, look at the video inputs that are supported, and make sure that the format appears on both of them and then make sure that we have them set correctly, of course, when we get on site. But we know they both have HDMI in this particular scenario. So we'll go with HDMI cables for this. And for our mic, let's say our mic output is XLR. And XLR is, it's a round connector with three pins. Okay, and these three pins are signal, a positive waveform, negative waveform, it's not so important what that is, you know, and then it usually has a clip, you know, on the top. So that way it's a locking connector, but you see this a lot uh, for microphones because as people are handling them, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't come unplugged on its own. We have XLR over here. Our audio input may be something else, but for the purposes of this simplified example, let's say this is also XLR. So we'll need an XLR cable, right? So very simply within this, we've defined a number of parameters that we need. We know what equipment we're bringing, right? Which in this case is the camera. We have our microphone. We have our recorder. We have an HDMI cable and we have an XLR cable, right? And this is what we refer to as an equipment list. Because of this, we know what to pack. We know how it's connected. We've done a lot of thinking up front, and that helps us kind of visualize and be able to convey and be able to hand, for example, this list to somebody else and say, we need you to pack this equipment so we have what we need when we arrive to be able to set up. That's a simplified example, but let's go into a more detailed example. All right, so let's say we're still gonna record a play, but this time, let's say, for our purposes that our objective is to have multiple cameras, okay? And we have multiple microphones. 
But once again, we want to end with a recording. So we need to record it. Right? So that's the basis of what we're doing right now. So let's draw our multiple cameras. In this case, I'm just going to define two because it doesn't matter whether you have two or 12. You know, it's going to be a lot of repetition after a certain point. Let's just start easy. So cam one, we have cam two, like one and like two, we made it. Okay. And then over here, we'll have our recorder, right? So we have our sources and we have our destination. So how do we get in the middle? So our recorder still only has one video input and one audio input. Okay. So we still have the same constraints that we did the last time, but now we have multiple sources that we have to deal with. So we can see already that we're going to need some more equipment. In order to combine the cameras, we need to have something to be able to switch between them efficiently. So usually what that entails is using some form of a switcher. It can be in software, it could be in hardware, but it will be some form of a switcher, right? And I'm abbreviating switcher SW. So we'll have in one and in two. So we'll take our output of our camera. We'll go into in one, take our output of camera two, go into in two. Okay, and let's say just for the purposes of uh, this discussion, let's stick with the same thing that we did the last time. So the output of our camera is going to be HDMI. So We've already checked the manual. We've already verified the switcher can take in HDMI. So we don't have to worry about that. So we can use HDMI cables again. And now our switcher, that has an output as well. And we need to run to the video input. Before we said the video input on this recorder that we're using is HDMI because this is an HDMI switcher, because we just checked the manual, so to speak, we're going to use HDMI output as well. Okay, so that's pretty much our video. So we saw based on the need of the sources uh, going to the destination, that we had to include an additional piece of equipment in the form of the switcher to be able to choose between the two during the production. And based on the inputs and the outputs, that were available and the signal formats that were compatible between all of the equipment, HDMI was appropriate for our application. So let's work on the audio. So we have the two mics, but we only have one audio input. Okay, and it could be two mics, it could be 20 mics, it doesn't matter. For the purposes of this example, we're using two mics. We need a way to be able to combine them just like we did with the video. So let's include an audio mixer, right? And we'll have in one and in two. We will connect mic one to in one, mic two to in two. Just like last time, we'll use XLR cables, right? And that's typical for mixers. Uh, to be able to support mics that use XLR. And then the output of the mixer can connect to our audio end. Before, last time we said that the uh, audio input would accept XLR, so we can stick with that. But there are circumstances where, like let's say, uh, it only has an eighth inch input or a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack to do the recording. You can actually use the mixer if it has different inputs and outputs. You can take in XLR from microphones, but then you can output, for example, like RCA. And RCA, you can get a cable that will go from RCA to eighth inch or the, to the 3.5 millimeter jack to the plug. And you can use the mixer to be able to make equipment that would not normally be compatible uh, because of the connector type be compatible with another device. So you could put an inline conversion. And that's an example of the kinds of things that you would identify here. You'd actually go through and say, ah, oh, I need a uh, special cable here. So I need to make sure I bring that special cable or 
I need this other piece of equipment to convert one signal to another. Uh, so that way these two pieces of equipment are compatible. This is what the signal flow diagram helps with is being able to do those identifications up front so you're not having to run and grab something from somewhere else because you didn't bring it or having to order something, you know, or having to wait for it otherwise. We see we have, we'll just review this once more. So we have our two cameras, we have our HDMI connections to our switcher, which is able to choose between the two cameras, which then outputs to HDMI to the recorder. We have our two microphones connected through XLR into our mixer. Our mixer is then able to create the mix of the mics and output a single XLR into our recorder as well. So we see end to end, all the equipment is connected to each other from source to destination. And because we've defined everything here, we know what our parts list is, so our equipment list, right? So we have two X cameras, two X mics, one X switcher, one X mixer, one X recorder. Then we have three HDMI cables, Right, we have three XLR cables, right? And that's everything that we need to bring with us in order to be able to perform this production. So we know what we have, we know where we're gonna set it up, we know, or we know what we're setting up, I should say. And then from there, we can hand this to on a piece of paper, you know, print it out, take a picture of it, print it out, copy it, whatever you need to do. And then you can hand it to somebody else and they'll also know, you know, what they need to connect. So they can work on camera two while you're working on camera one, or you can work on setting up the recorder, the switcher and the mixer while they work on both cameras and the microphones. So it definitely helps in terms of uh, just trying to distribute the tasks where you know, you're thought, you've thought about everything ahead of time. So it's your design. It's you know, going to accomplish the objectives that were laid out initially but you don't have to do it alone. You, you, you have some help. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and um, you know, be sure to hit that notification bell as well. That way you'll know the next time that we're getting extended. So until next time, take care.